Good evening. It being six o'clock, I call the September, is this on? September. <laughs> September 2021 Town of Clayton Planning Board meeting to order. For roll call this evening, we are uh, missing Mr. Moore and Ms. Begley. Uh, item number two on our agenda this evening is adjustments. Are there any adjustments to the agenda needed? Okay, thank you. If there are none, we will move on to item number three, administration of oaths. We have two new planning board members this evening and I will hand that over to the board clerk. I'll make you go down the front. <laughs> Thank you for that, and we uh, welcome to both of you. We're so happy to have you here. Thank you for your service to the town. Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is number four, approval of the minutes. Are there any corrections to the minutes needed? If there are none, I will entertain a motion. Motion to accept. Okay, motion to accept by board member Powers. Is there a second? Second. Second, board member Coates. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Motion carries. The next item this evening is 5A. We are going to review and discuss the draft comprehensive growth plan. Uh, this work session is an opportunity to provide input into the draft plan before we take action at the October planning board meeting. Um, so this is an information item and we can discuss this and provide whatever feedback we would like. And at this point, I'll turn it over to staff. Thank you. I uh, just wanted to give the board some, um, I guess, like a better term, brief direction tonight. Um, purposefully have structured this to be really open and broad. I want it to be a, an open discussion with the board. Um, I hope y'all have all done your homework and read through the plan and, and um, looked through the presentation that was given also at the joint meeting last week. But this is really your opportunity to 
um, dig into the plan and talk about it and provide any recommendations or any comments you may have on it to me that I can get back to our consultants. Um, just so you're aware, as mentioned, the staff report moving forward, um, we're, we're working on, the consultants are working on finalizing the plan and plan to have that completed later this month or later in October. Um, and then in your October meeting, you will receive the what should be the final draft plan, including the implementation section with the recommendations outlined. And at that meeting, we are hoping if the board so chooses to recommend adoption of the plan at your October meeting, you don't have to, but that is the hope and the goal. Um, and then moving forward from that, the plan would go to the council November 1st, and then if needed um, for a public hearing on November 1st, and council action would either be November 1st or November 15th, um, or of course they can hold it longer, or if you hold it longer, that obviously would also change the timeline. But that is the timeline moving forward. We are hoping to get you the final draft plan um, at least a week before your next meeting. Hopefully, um, we'll be able to give it to you a little bit longer before that. But I can promise you, I'll get it to you at least a week, at least that week before, so that you'll have the weekend to um, read over it, and and you can just count on having that weekend to read the plan. <laughs> um, so with that, I do have the plan document pulled up here. Um, I also have the uh, presentation that was provided last week if you want to look at anything on that. Um, I'll be sitting over there taking notes, but if you have any questions, just let me know. Or if you want to go to a specific page or part of the plan, let me know and I can get you there. So with that, I will turn it over and let the board begin their discussion. Thank you so much. I was just going to start off briefly um, <clears throat> with a little just background real quick. I know we have new members and I don't, I, this was very educational for me, but the, the draft, this growth plan that municipalities are required to have them, they're generally for an area growing like ours, it's a good idea to update it every five to seven years is what I've been told. Um, and our last one came out in 2015 and it really you know, we could get very philosophical about it, but it does address a lot of the really important topics about directing and managing growth, which is on a lot of people's mind in this town. So um, I did want to just say that for anyone who might be listening and just kind of understand what it, what, where it's coming from and, and what the point is. Um, and so from there, we can all just go ahead and, and jump in. And I don't know, um, I have some comments. I'm sure some of you do as well. Can open up the floor. I have. It's, I guess this is much a question, and in, in what you just said, uh, I'm, I have a hard time with the logic of doing a twenty-five year plan every five years. <laughs> if it's a, if it's being done every five years, why isn't it a five-year plan? Or maybe a 10 year, but for, a, it just, that doesn't sound logical to me. Yeah. That's the first time I've, I, I had heard that. Yeah. Is, is there a logical answer behind that? Um, well, I, I hope this is logical, um, but it's the best answer I can give you right now. Yeah. So the idea behind comprehensive plans in general is that you are, you're looking out, um, the goal of them is to look out a number of years. Um, most jurisdictions do generally look out 15, 20, 25 years. Mm -hmm. Um, the reason for looking out that far but then still updating every three to five years or seven years is because, of, especially in a place like Clayton, because we are growing so rapidly mm -hmm. and things are changing so quickly, um, today we can say in 2045 we're going to look like this. But in three years, no idea. things have changed so much yeah. that we need to come back and say, well, no, we're actually going to look a little more like this. Mm -hmm. So um, I will say this is probably more of a larger update than you will normally see. Mm -hmm. um, and, it, and it varies. It really varies by jurisdiction, um, how they do growth, how they do comprehensive plans, how often they update it, what those updates look like. Um, Ideally, if we put a good one in place now, 
mm-hmm. in three to five years when we come back to update it, it's yeah. it's much smaller of an update and more mm-hmm. like yeah. okay, we've here's things we've accomplished. Here's a few more things we need to look to do now, and here's how situations have changed. Mm-hmm. Um, so ideally, you come back and look at it in three to five years to say, okay, here's how circumstances have changed. Here's what we've done. Um, but in our case, since you know the last one was adopted up. I believe you said in 2015. 15. It's been, you know, it's been more like six years, and it's been probably six of the fastest growing years of Clayton. Yeah. Um, and so we need to do a more holistic, you know, look and and more holistic update this time around. Mm-hmm. But hopefully in the future we won't have quite this large an update. Um, and really, you know, ideally we'll, we look at it more than once every five years, um, especially in areas like this and in the triangle. If you wait five years, you're already behind the ball as we've seen. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, that, that was a question about what you said. I had a, a question. Would you mind if I continued with nope, that? No, go right ahead. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, my question was uh, about the survey that was mentioned Wednesday evening. Uh, and, and again, in, in the report, uh, Wednesday evening, and in, oh, I guess in, in a copy of w- what they had in the presentation, uh, it said there were 1,600 responses. In the report, it said there were 2,300 responses. Um, comparing that with the population of 26,307, uh, even, even the higher number of responses is nine percent of the population uh, does does that survey it 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 looks as if that you know from what I was hearing Wednesday evening and, and generally what I see here that a lot of the information going back and forth with this uh, referenced the survey and if if you're only referencing nine percent of the population that seems like an an awful lot of stuff to be putting on nine percent of the population and um that's you know probably one of the biggest problems we always have in planning um especially when working on something like this those of us employed in planning and and the board members and town council usually see this as something very important Unfortunately, a lot of the citizens don't always see it as that important. And so um, the fact that we got almost 9%, I I would actually turn it around, and the fact that we got somewhere close to 9% of our population to respond to Mm -hmm. a survey for a comprehensive plan is great. Um, I, I mean, I will say I, you know, I previously worked in Morrisville and we did a transportation plan there and I think our response rate was more like two or three percent. So, um, the fact that we, we've gotten as many responses as we have, I actually think that's good. I agree with you, but that's also why, you know, partly why we, why you rely on, on professional staff and professional consultants and then also why ultimately it comes to the planning board and the town council, mm-hmm. um, because the, the assumption is that y'all are going to be representing the public as well. And so, you know, if you if you see things in the plan that you think it should address that it's not because it didn't pop out as a um, you know item with the survey, then that's you know this is your opportunity to bring that up and say, hey, we need to address this because we weren't addressing we I don't feel that we're addressing it well or we're not addressing it at all. Okay. Thank you. Hey, Madam. Yep. I don't I don't want to monopolize everything at the beginning here. I've got a couple other questions. A couple other things, sure. Later on. Okay. If if, if you want to Bob, move around a little way. bit. Yeah. yeah that, thank you for offering that. Yeah, let's do that. If there's someone else that James, you want to go ahead? I would like to ask a question because to me this is the basis for what we do in good planning because this is our visioning over the next 25 years and say, what do we think is appropriate? And I think the way we need to look at this is if we were to say a developer from out of state came in and they were looking for a specific use, they're gonna go to this plan or should go to this plan and say, okay, where can I put my industrial building at? You know, so they aren't necessarily looking at Barber Mill Road or Covered Bridge Road, you know? So I think that's, you know, extremely important. And hopefully we'll be able 
to build off of this and have more conversations about true planning because a lot of what we've done traditionally on this board is administrative type ministerial type approvals that are on a what I'm, I'm going to say is an antiquated code because you know we have got to have a new unified development ordinance that relates back to this one thing that that i see that i think hope i hope sparks some debate with us right now is if you look at the map it's got the intersection of ranch road and future interstate 42 as being low density residential and i'm assuming that that overlays a neighborhood center but it's you know a fairly limited area and, and one thing that that for me would be interesting i don't even know if the town has this at this point but i would hope the town is looking at this considering we're spending 100 plus million dollars on a wastewater treatment plan is you know what are our future future serviceable areas i would think that the only way that you could relate future sewer service to this map is to look at high density and medium density residential and i'm assuming that's where we think stuff can be sewered at but i don't know has that been coordinated with um the engineering department or is that just something that we said this is closer in so it should be serviceable because i know just because something is close in doesn't necessarily mean it's serviceable by sewer I know I'm throwing a big question on you, Ben, because you've been here what, all two <laughs> two weeks. So, <laughs> well, there is a section in there because I I called this out in my notes as well, which was kind of talking about which you it's create a water and sewer master plan actually, which I thought was great. And then that whole goal, I think it's SI two, um, and there were several strategies in there that were about adequate water and sewer capacity. Well, and one thing that I was looking at is I know that we've had at least twice we've approved plans for a high density subdivision that would um, be on the back side of Glen Haven subdivision and, um, co and um, um, country lane, country lane, country lane and Glen Haven. I'm looking at Jeff because we kind of grew up yeah, right there. So, Chris. Yeah. yeah. So, so what my question is, is you know for me knowing the lay of the land over there it would seem to me that a good place for a regional pump station in the future would be on the creek that is very close to the intersection of branch road and future interstate 42 and if we're putting sewer infrastructure there or want to put sewer infrastructure there why are we calling it low density residential and that I can't really answer right now, um, but just going back a little bit to a higher level, um, it is, you know, this is, I think, when you look at water and sewer versus a land use plan, you do have a little bit of the chicken and the egg situation um, because they can, they can both guide each other. And so I think in this case, this is where, as Andrea mentioned, as the chairwoman mentioned, where you know one of the recommendations coming out of this is to develop a more comprehensive master plan for the water and sewer that will be based on the land use plan and the densities that are recommended in the land use plan. So, um, sorry. Um, so, I mean, as far as water and sewer go in relation to the land use plan, you know, and I, I'll be the first to admit, I have not had a chance to really dig in through all the plan yet and, and see what's the rec what all the recommendations are. Um, and Patrick, our economic development director, who's been shepherding the plan through, it's not here tonight, but I would say, you know, from, from a planner standpoint, you can be you can be a little agnostic if you want to about the water and sewer and if you can get the if i mean ideally you would not have high density residential out of the very edges of your etj the whole purpose of the etj area the extraterritorial jurisdiction area is to provide that that transition to lower density out into more of the county type jurisdiction 
Um, and so you would not want high density there. And you would, I would, I agree, you would want to move forward with the assumption that that's unlikely to get water and sewer service in the future. But if there are areas that you think warrant additional growth and could could deal with additional growth, if if the infrastructure could get there, then that's something to address in the plan. So for example, if there's a specific area of town where you think it's shown in the plan as being low density, but you think, hey, that could be an area that really could have higher density if we can get the infrastructure there, we can put that in the plan. Because remember, this is a long reaching plan and in 10, 15, 20 years, we may be ready for higher density out there. Just because we put it in the plan does not mean it'll come tomorrow. Um, if there's no services or the services cannot get there tomorrow, it's probably not going to happen even if it's in the plan. But the plan provides that overall policy and guide for the town to say, in the future, we see these areas as where we should, where we will ultimately have higher density and services. Well, one thing that this area has fairly large contiguous tracks. I say, I guess that's the right word. Where you have, you know, landowners to own 300 acres or 150 acres or 200 acres, and uh, that's why I see that area. It, it just it, it'd be interesting to bring that up to the council to see what they think, especially because. Uh, I know what you're saying about um, you know, on the edge of the ETJ, but you know, if you look at Riverwood and Glen Laurel, they're both on the edges of our ETJ too. And I'm just looking at there's not many tracks that are that large that are undeveloped, and that's why I think it's worth yep. warranting a further conversation about that. And you're looking and, in this general area, correct? Excuse me. You're looking in this general area where my cursor is on the screen. Well, it's, it's down where it's got that little neighborhood. It's like like pink um, hatched. Oh, right over there. Here. Okay, um, in this general area. Yeah, because because we know that we're getting ready to have Interstate 42 is going to make a direct shot. You know, or excuse me, Highway 42. You know, with the um, ranch road. with the ranch road realignment, yeah. it's going to make a direct shot to that. And, you know, we've got a four-lane interstate highway that's coming off of, what, a eight-lane interstate highway? Mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, to just sit there and say that we think it's appropriate to have one to ten-acre tracks in that area, I think will be short-sighted, especially if you look at growing the town's tax base. And, you know, I've seen this grow a lot over the past 30 years. And, and I think that the growth that's coming is going to be just as significant. So I think that that's why we are, we might be short-sighted um, if we don't include that. And if, if, if you look at Ranch Road, if you go up to the, where uh, the, the connection would be on the extension of 42 East across 70, there's a big subdivision there that's been approved right behind sheets and, uh -huh. and, 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 and right, right. And, and then if you come down uh ranch road where uh what's the road that splits off at uh going yeah little little little, on the opposite side of ranch road is where cobblestone mm -hmm. is up there that whole area ha has been platted and as far as I know, that that's been approved, so that I, I don't I'm, I don't think either of them have started anything on them. Yeah. But if if they wanted to, they could you know, start next week. I mean, the part you're talking about, I think, on Down Ranch is 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 not for a while. But you know, did that if if this stuff happens where that becomes a four lane road and you got the highway going down the bottom. There's going to be a lot of a lot of changes relatively quickly. Yep. Okay, I will make that note. Thank you. Just to kind of move it around, were there any other board members itching to say anything in particular? I did have a question. So, is this land use plan kind of based on current infrastructure or the future of the infrastructure that we have currently planned? Does that make sense? does make sense. I believe it is based on kind of both, <laughs> kind of what we know is there and what we would expect 
the direction for it to move? Because as, these, me, as these other plans develop, they should feed into the development here, the land use mm -hmm. plan. Mm -hmm. So this is the baseline mm -hmm. that all these other de development plans are going to come out of. So I think it's important that they all align so we're planning accordingly. And that's a really good point. And I did notice that one of the um, strategies that, like I said earlier, was create a water and sewer master plan. So I think that would that would help as well. Great discussion. I thought it was a very good plan. You know, very thorough and as comprehensive as it says. But it's uh, you know, I have a hard time imagining that far out. But anyway, I thought it was a very good plan. I was going to, there was a couple things that I thought were top priorities, which uh, be, especially from planning board, and I know this is going to happen, but updating the UDC, um, just thought I'd bring it up again. We, we have had that mentioned for various reasons. I know here at the board when things have come through that, you know, something could be better, and, and so just wanted to echo that. Um, also from a planning board perspective, I liked the the small area plans they proposed. I don't know if any of you picked up on those as well, but um, I thought those were great. And then they even mentioned in there the US 70 um, business. So US 70 business looking at what we can use for that area, maybe redevelopment, transportation, aesthetic improvements. And I know Mr. Lipscomb, you have mentioned that before as well. So I, I liked seeing that in there. Um, Feel free to jump in. Any thoughts or Mr. Powers, if you had another question you wanted to get out there? Yeah. Uh, the, my next thing is uh, relative to the planning for growth in, in Clayton. Um, and two of the things that were mentioned in that were the, the highways and, and the schools. Uh, the highways you know, we we can generally say to DOT what we would like and what we want and whatever. Uh, most on the on the map that had the extensions and the widenings of of, of the roads, uh, I believe all of those were DOT roads. And so, you know, I I know of of, of sections right now of forty two west. Uh, from Business 70 to the bypass was supposed to be started uh, 22 or 23 uh, until they started, excuse me, until they started all the work on I-40. When they started all the work on I-40 from 440 to 42, I guess, uh, that, that section and the next section of Highway 42 got shelved, and I, I don't, I don't, I imagine they have a date on that now. But to have have that stuff on our our plan, that we don't have any control over that. I was looking for that too. Can I just say real quick, because just for anyone who might be listening, um, of course, Business 70 and NC 42 are maintained by DOT, right. mm -hmm. but also for those who may not be aware, Main Street. Amelia Church Road, Guy Road, O'Neill Street, mm. all DOT roads. Mm. The other thing on, on that same topic were the schools. And I've, I've asked multiple times uh, about the need for public schools in Clayton, around Clayton, uh, and been told that Clayton cannot do anything about that. It's Johnston County and the Johnston County School Board, Board of Education, whatever it would be called. And if, if, if we've got something in the plan, just like with the, with the highways, uh, if, if we've got something that the town doesn't have any control over, uh, it, 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 it seems questionable or, or something that, that it, it, it would be in our plan. I mean, we may want this, we've been wanting it probably, but if, if we can't, if there's nothing we can do about it, uh, I, I, I don't want to say it, it's like we're spinning our wheels, but 
Um, I can't, you take it. <laughs> And I'll try and address both of those issues. Um, transportation, I'm very aware of and very familiar with as I, that's what I spent my last almost nine years of my career working on uh, in Wake County. So <clears throat> I'll start on transportation first. Transportation is, it, even though we have a number of state roads that we don't necessarily have control over, it is still important for us in our plan to include recommendations for those roads. And actually, I think you'll see one of the um, big recommendations, top recommendations that will come out of this, uh, this plan is actually to, for the town to do a, transport, a comprehensive transportation plan. Okay. Um, and while we don't, and, and it's important to look at our roads and our transportation network and system holistically, um, not just roads, but also, you know, not just for cars, but also for bicyclists, for pedestrians and buses and, and those type of things. But the important, the reason that we want to include recommendations for roads that we may not necessarily have control over is several fold. One, there are ways for the town to, to get money for NCDOT roads. One of those is a program out of our local um, MPO, which is the Regional Transportation Planning Organization for the area, Campo. They have a program. They Campo as a as a group, as an organization gets um, roughly 20 to $25 million every year to distribute to um, its member jurisdictions for uh, transportation projects, road, bicycle, pedestrian, transit. Um, those, a lot of those funds are a good way for the town to, and a lot of towns have been successful in this area, um, to get state roads improved to how they see, how they want them to be because Frankly, from the state standpoint, the state is does not have enough money to mm -hmm. um, fix all the road issues we have, especially in a fast-growing area like the Triangle. So that's that's one. Having it in the plan can help the council to set priorities on when they are able to or, or want to go after some of these state funds or, or federal funds, what state roads they may want to spend them on because Frankly, you know, th that's where more of the issues are going to lie with congestion and, and with needing to widen, get widening or get on their, um, mm -hmm. get facilities for bicyclists or pedestrians on. It's a lot of times it's going to be the state roads, not necessarily the local roads. So that's, that's one of the reasons. Mm -hmm. Another important reason to include all roads in our transportation plan include and and get a transportation plan that focuses on all of our roads is that we can tie that into our UDC or UDO and as development occurs, require development to improve those roads as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I will tell you from experience in Morseville, we were extremely successful with that. And a lot of towns are. Um, so if you have a strong either transportation element of your comprehensive plan or a strong transportation plan and you have the right language in your development regulations, you can get, you can require developers to do some significant work if they construct developments large enough, but you can require them, get them to do some significant work that can really help address your transportation issues. I, th I think Clayton has done that in, in certain areas. Something that, that you mentioned that brought to mind the Wednesday meeting, uh, I believe it was Mr. Holder uh, had mentioned, uh, which would seem to me to be a very good idea to have the town <clears throat> participate, like on Ranch Road, acquiring some of the right-of-way or all of the right-of-way and talking with DOT and saying, look, we've done this already for you here. And I would think that would encourage them to maybe move something up, up the schedule a little bit uh, if, if they didn't. Because I know yeah. from, from my experience that the real estate acquisition is is a big a, a big part of, of yeah, a, a big part of whatever project that you're working on. Yeah, um, and that does certainly help. I mean, I know um, there's there's a number of jurisdictions that have done that before, and that does help. Yeah. Um, I mean, I will say right now, and and really realistically, for the next five plus years, 
you're going to see very little new projects started by NCDOT. Yeah, um, that's what and, and that, and I mean, you mentioned the 42, you know, getting pushed back because of 4042 and the I-40 widening. Yeah. Um, so I think we're going to see a lot of move, a lot of shifting um, on the DOT projects over the next few years as they try and address their their funding concerns. And I mean, the truth of the matter is, just as a state. Um, and it's a bigger issue, but there's just not enough funding to go around yeah. to address the transportation concerns. However, having have addressing transportation recommendations in our plans mm -hmm. helps because we can get developers, um, you know, as they develop to address some of, you know, to provide some transportation network improvements. And then it also helps provide some priorities for when the town is ready to spend its money or ready to apply for outside funding mm. from the federal government or on their places for transportation. Having, having those plans helps set those priorities. On to the schools issue. Um, that is an issue that is a big issue, um, and it's it is everywhere. Um, coming from Wake County, you know, we obviously had very similar issues, um, and the problem with that comes in really from um, the top at the state law in North Carolina. You know, the way a combination of the way school systems are set up being for the most part animals of the county um, with the exception of some you know small city districts here and there in North Carolina but for the most part schools are the responsibility are the responsibility of the county and North Carolina planning statutes have for a number of years have essentially said that um, as a city we cannot require we cannot have what they call adequate public facilities ordinance um, which means that we cannot require that a developer prove or provide, ensure that there are adequate public facilities that are paid for with tax dollars prior to them being able to develop. That goes for roads, that goes for schools, and other things too. So that's part of the problem there. And then also to just the coordination and trying to time things between development that occurs and is approved on a local level and coordinating with a county school system that is all you know its own separate animal as well. So I would say it is while it is it is important to include schools in our comprehensive plan and school include um, discussion about schools. Mm -hmm. A lot of that is going to really be you know a lot of those recommendations are going to be around ensuring that we are properly coordinating as best we can with the school system. Mm -hmm to work with them to have them provide you know areas where they see based on our growth where they see that they will need schools in the future if they can show us and provide us areas where they will need schools in the future there may be ability for the town to work with developers to help get some of those sites set aside but that's that's why it's important to address it in the plan um, and then having, if it's a priority in the plan, then the staff can take that priority and work with the school system to try and address, you know, any potential concerns with ensuring that there's enough schools in Clayton for the growth. And I, I, I can understand that. And I, I realize, like Ms. Archer said, that you're new in town and stuff like that. Um, that new schools is is a need. Um, I don't think there's a, an elementary school, a middle school in, 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 in the area that does not have trailers around it. Uh, East Clayton Elementary School was you know, was built 10 years ago. When they opened, they had trailers outside. And if 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 the if the school board, I mean, finding land for for a school that's that's we've had subdivisions that uh, you know sub, the the developer gave some land for a school. Uh, it was enough for an elementary school. It was not enough for an elementary school and a middle school, and so the school board said, "No, you can't be the one of them." And stuff like that. I, I don't know what our our people, you know, 
town people could do, but it, it, it seems like it's it's an uphill battle because you you've got schools out there that that you know are surrounded by trailers. Yeah, and, and that doesn't have anything to do with land getting land. Right, and I mean from from a comprehensive plan standpoint. Um, all I can say is, you know, if you think there needs to be some additional recommendations around that issue, you know, we can work with the consultants and try and draft some additional recommendations. Um, but I will also say, you know, in a, in a high growth area like this, mm -hmm. it, it's pretty much impossible for the schools to keep up. Um, so I think, you know, you're, you're almost always going to see that happen where, you know, very quickly after school is open, you either add trailers or you cap the school and, you know, and then, then you run into problems, yeah. um, you know, when you have to do that. So it, schools are, are a big issue. Um, they do relate to our growth and relate to planning, but, um, but again, it's, there's only so much we can do. Mm -hmm. Um, but I would say if that is a priority, you know, that the board sees it should be a priority, you know, let's look at the section of the plan that talks about that. And is there, are there additional recommendations we need? Do we need to strengthen the recommendations that are in there? Do we need to use different language? That's the type of things that we can do um, in this plan to try and make sure that that flows through um, to the council and hopefully flows into the adopted document. Thank you. One thing I think that we can do better is to advocate to the school board and their consultants on what we've approved and what we've got approved now. Because I go to a lot of county planning board meetings and this question about schools ask every time. I mean, it's repetitive. If they, if they approve six subdivisions, one of the school board members is going to ask, what about schools every time in the same exact meeting? But when they give their numbers for saying, you know, this is how many approved lots we have, this is how many, you know, children we have in the schools, they don't include the municipalities. So that would be something that would be interesting to see is how do we communicate currently with them? And, you know, is there one definitive source where somebody could go to and open up a PDF and say, hey, there's 4,000 lots that are approved already in the town of Clayton. And, you know, this is where they're at. And, and is, have we got a map to say, you know, this is what's coming, this is what's been approved? Yeah. So um, there, there's a group out of NC State University that um, consults ahead. with almost every school district, I think, in the state on growth and they provide a lot of growth projections and work with school districts to try and and see how they can plan for the growth. Um, and Johnson County is actually just now, at, right as I was starting um, as planning director, I think my second day on on the job, I would set in on a webinar where they're they're working on on a process now to go through and look at their projections and update those. And part of that is working with all the municipalities, including Clayton. So we are already doing that now. Um, I'm not sure how it was done historically, but I do know historically there have been reports made from the from the planning department to the county school system should have been probably yearly of, you know, this is how much we've, you know, this is, these are all the new developments and this is what's been approved. Um, so the school should have some, the school system should have some idea, but this process that we're starting to work on with the school system that I think is probably going to take, um, go on for the next three to six months, that should help things because this will be our opportunity to really make sure the school system is aware of just how much growth we have coming. Yeah, I think, I think that's a key. We've mm -hmm. got to advocate for ourselves. And you know, I think I think it's crazy for the you know for the council. Even though we can't have the limited uh, influence on it, you know, for us to say, you know, we would like to see a school in this district, or we would like to see a school in this district, because us advocating for that eventually, I think, will be heard. And especially, if we can give them great information on what we've got coming and something that they can plug in and use. So I'm, I'm thrilled to see that you've already had a conversation with them and are already been keyed in on that. Yeah. So I'm. Um, I think that's wonderful. I, I, I'd like to shift gears real quick. Could I ask him real quick, what's that process, that new process called? I just want to be able to... 
I'm not sure. No biggie. I'll find out later. Thank you. Go ahead, James. But it's it, they're they're updating their it's it's an update of their I think their growth projection framework and and how they they work overall. But um, so we are but we're actively working with them on that. Thank you. So I have not had an opportunity yet to take and look at the current downtown overlay district versus the proposed or I guess the overlay district's not being changed in this. I do not believe it is. But I, I've really not had a chance to look at how that's changing here. So you know you can see right now with the um, Hubert um, Lee um, finishing up building on the end of West Main Street you know that Main Street is mm -hmm. growing you know and thank God you know we've got a Main Street that can grow. Um, you know, personally, I feel like Main Street you know, starts at Highway 70, you know, and I think that's where the addresses actually start, where this mm -hmm. Main Street starts. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that West Main Street, you know, goes hopefully eventually to Shotwell Road in some form or fashion. So um, I, I really feel like we need to put an emphasis on that, and I really don't want to see anything downgraded on what is currently able to be done on uh on main street you know i, I think that before we were and, and, and i'm not saying i'm against anything or terminology that's on here but i really think it would be remiss of us to bring in something that would potentially downgrade what we could do is permitted uses on main street without there being a significant amount of conversation there. And I know that, you know, people are dreaming of other buildings and people are you know, making investments in downtown for something that might be two years out or three years out, but you know, they're putting pieces of the puzzle together. Um, and that's a concern to me. So I just, I'm really gonna study that between now and our next meeting. And I know it would surprise me if you had a great answer to that. If you do, it'd be like amazing. But, <laughs> But, but I wouldn't expect you to, you know, with the short time you've been on the job, but I really you know, am concerned about making sure that we at least stay on an equal footing and we don't downgrade. Yeah, and I mean, as far as I'm aware, I, I don't think this plan tries to downgrade anything around downtown. I think it is, it's trying to continue, you know, the good work that's been done and, and continue to, to figure out a way to grow um, the downtown area and the Main Street area. One of the recommendations that you will see at your next meeting, one of the implementation items, along with us on their small area plans, will be a new downtown development plan that is, I will cover at least the overlay and probably a, some area outside of that too. Um, and so, I mean, that's one thing you'll see, I think, when you see the full implementation chapter come to you next at the next meeting, is there are going to be multiple small area plans recommended. There's going to be um, a recommendation to develop and develop a transportation plan. There's going to be a recommendation to rewrite our UDC. And so, um, as you can tell, the planning department and, and hopefully this board will be very busy over the next um, few years as we try and get these implemented. The hard thing for the council will be to prioritize those and figure out what what we do first or what we can, can do immediately and what we may have to wait a year or two on. And that's going to be very difficult because with our growth and with our rate of growth, um, you know, on some of these places, if you wait a year or two, it may be too late. Um, so, so those are some of the things, and, and I think those are some of the hard discussions that the council will be having over the next few months as they finish up, a, hopefully adopting this growth plan and moving into the budget discussions for next year is figuring out where those limited monies are going to go, especially when it comes to planning items that are gonna be needed. Go ahead. Uh, Kind of connected to that uh, in the in the report, the economic development is has two goals, and one is to increase well-paid jobs, which is fine, uh, and the other is to support downtown Clayton as an economic asset. Uh, I don't want to defame anybody. Uh, 
Clayton is not just downtown Clayton or Main Street. Uh, this report is, is looking ahead and talking about going from 20,000 or 26,000 to 50,000 people. Uh, to my knowledge, there are there is no shopping in in Clayton that's not a, a strip shopping center or a, a strip shopping. Uh, there was one planned at 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 the intersection of East Forty Two and Glen Laurel Road. Uh, it was supposed to be half apartments and half shopping, and that was adapted a year and a half or so ago, and now it's going to be three-quarter apartments, a bank, a, store, a storage place, and a daycare. And if they can fit anything else in there, they'll do the end up rest home. Uh, but as far as, as shopping, if, if, if somebody in here wants to, one of us wants to get a suit for my, my kid's wedding, I have to go to Raleigh or Cary. If 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 my daughter wants to get a prom dress, she has to go to Raleigh or Cary. That's that's okay. You know, there's stuff on Main Street that's good, but you've got stuff like that happening. If if they want to go see a name show, they have to go to Raleigh or Durham. There's there's nothing here that. Like, like, if they want to get furniture, yeah, you know, there's nothing here. That, and if if you get these well-paid jobs, and fifty thousand of them, I don't think you'll have. But anyway, uh, you just focusing on Main Street is is going to diminish the appeal of, of Clayton. Yeah, if if if, if they can live someplace else and have drive 20 minutes to work. Yeah, so um, I will say that, you know, if that is something that the board would like to see, I mean, I, and I can, I'll certainly make a note of it, but that is, you know, that that's the type of feedback we need and that, you know, we can get into the plan as, you know, for economic development, you know, consider the entire town and services and, and mm -hmm. retail, not just downtown and not just jobs. Um, we do, I mean, if you look in the plan and on the future land use map, there are a number of um, community, I believe they're called community centers that are planned. And that's, I think, trying to get at sort of what you're thinking about is more of the mixed use, you know, centers that have some residential but also have some of that shopping that would be you know maybe considered a little bit higher end shopping um, rather than a traditional strip mall so we do have some of those identified okay. but um, if you don't feel that the plan does a good job of, of voicing that then that's certainly a comment I can forward along um, and that the consultants can look at you know and and ensure that we have some good language in the plan to address you know non-residential non-residential growth outside of downtown area okay well i was just reading from the report all right and like i said it had two goals the well-paying jobs are fine i mean yeah, yeah. uh but it, it it was the other part with the with the uh it it this seemed like they were just targeting downtown clayton okay so uh, just to add to that, because I had a, a little note here about that as well. This came up in a conversation I had. Um, it seems like if you get down into the strategy level, there are recommendations for how we zone things and what's part of that zone. And then it seemed, so it seemed like to me, and I could be wrong, but like we were offering places for the type of businesses you're talking about to go in. I mean, and we've had some even recently. It's just... The way I was reading it was the developers or the investors weren't putting those kinds of options in here, even though there's they have the the land and the zoning areas to do it. So it seemed like at the strategy level we were we were like he yeah. was saying well, the um, community center designation and they're there, and then it's kind of up to 
whoever wants to put in, like you're talking about something a little higher end, you know, not a strip mall type of thing. I, Does that I make can sense? Under, I can understand that. Uh, my, my experience was from Greensboro. And uh, over there, if, you know, uh, somebody wanted to do a, a, a shopping center, they went to the planning department and they did that. And they, they determined, you know, what level it, it was going to be at. And if the developer didn't like that, they went away and somebody else came and like that. But the, the city made sure that they, they got what, what they were looking for in that area, like, like what I think we're trying to do here in there. Now, out at the, at the Glen Laurel thing, uh, the only reasoning I heard was that, that actually I didn't hear anything. They, they were able to build and, and sell the, uh, the apartments very easily. And so they wanted to build and sell more of them. Uh, I, I, I don't know if there was any impetus from, I, I know when the, when the land was sold, it was, it was supposed to be apartments on, on one and retail on the other. And um, there is, is, at this point, and this is six years after that was done, uh, there's one restaurant on, 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 on the whole retail part. And, and, and they said a year and a half ago, yeah, the next thing we're going to have is, is two rows of, of, of shops. And, and that hasn't broken ground yet. So I, I can't speak specifically to, to Clayton, but I can say more holistically and from experience, one of, <laughs> at times, one of the biggest enemies of good growth plans like this and, and good plans like that is the economy and the market. Yes. Um, no and that is one of the things we've always run into in planning is um, a developer will will bring forth a plan for something really cool and that you know and, and that seems like it could work and it's a lot of times we come to find out the market won't sustain that mm -hmm. um, and that's always you know that's that's always a big push and pull is what will the market sustain versus what we want to see um, and I will say, you know, that's why some places, one of the things that we've started seeing um, more in some of these comprehensive plans is some market analyses and bringing on economic um, economic projection experts who can who can do some of those market analyses and say, here's where the market's going to be, and here's where what you're likely to actually be able to get. You may want this. Here's what you may actually be able to get. Um, I think for this plan, it's it we're we're needing to. This plan is too broad to get into that level of detail. Hmm. But that is something that you know certainly could be recommended as an additional implementation step um, coming out of this plan is to look at, especially for certain areas, maybe to look at do some doing some market analyses, um, especially related to some of these small area plans. Those are perfect areas to do some in-depth market analyses where you can try and actually figure out, here's what we want to see. Now, is it actually possible from a market standpoint? Yes, yes I understand that. Thank you. I had a couple other things I was going to add in. I'm just, these were going back around to transportation because I know with roads and schools, we just seem to go around in a circle with the same old thing of kind of what can we do. So I was reading in there just curious what sorts of specific things jumped out. And I wanted to share a couple of them just for the record. There is a strategy in there to partner with the county to establish a transportation enhancement fund to alleviate congestion. I thought that was interesting. And then there was another section that talked about coordinating with the county to determine shared priorities. Um, so that was nice to see something outside of the usual response of, you know, oh, we're tied up 
because of DOT. So kind of looking at the county level of things maybe we could do. Um, and then one other thing I thought was interesting in here, there was a strategy for maintaining an inventory and condition assessment of town owned streets and sidewalks. Um, so I know a lot of the roads we don't have power over, um, but the ones that we do, we could keep a more organized assessment of what needs to be done and, and that sort of that thing. Um, and just one last thing on that, I noticed in the water and sewer portion, there was a strategy for um, kind of having a strategic plan for personnel for maintaining the water and sewer operations that we have. So. I like that because we are growing and we do need the expertise and the personnel to keep up with our utilities. So I was thinking with as much as the transportation thing seems to come up, and this is just a suggestion, take it or leave it, but I wondered if there was a way to work a similar personnel statement into the transportation segment. Um, something about strategically planning for personnel who maybe have that expertise, and, and maybe we already have those people, maybe we could use another one, but that just jumped out at me. Sounds like the same thing uh, Mr. Howell was referring to on the other subject, to get somebody who could look at the economic, how, how forecasts, and see where that was going with the, with the housing, shopping, and stuff like that, and it would be somebody else with the same thing with transportation aspects. Anything else? I think we had a really great discussion. I was pretty impressed with us, as a matter of fact. Okay. Hopefully there's going to be a whole lot more discussion about this in the future. But this is where we need to have our heads in planning because this is what makes all the difference in the world. And um, hopefully we'll be able to jump into a UDO, right? So the county is currently, I'm actually on this the steering committee for the county's rewrite that's going on right now. So we're in our third meeting of their um, revisioning, revisioning of their uh, strategic growth plan. Okay. So um, it's going to be interesting to see how that goes. A good cross section of people that are on that committee. So it'll be interesting to see how that comes down. But but a, a lot of it is talking about municipalities. And one thing that um, is wonderful to hear at those meetings is there for such a long time, it was like you had the county and had the towns. It, and the, the towns weren't in the county, you know, except for when they had to pay taxes, you know. And now they're actually talking about the towns being in the county, you know, and, and working together more. So hopefully there will be um, some ability to do that. But we've got to remember also that Clayton's on the cutting edge as far as municipalities. We're the, the biggest municipality, and we're, we're the ones that send the most stuff. So us having a great relationship with the county as far as staff to staff and council to uh, commissioner is going to be huge because you know, really what Smithfield's seeing now is what we saw 20 years ago. You know, and what Princeton will see 10 years from now is what we would have seen 30 years ago. You know, <laughs> and we can learn from each other, but um. But we will be on the cutting edge of that because a lot of the other municipalities don't need what Clinton necessarily needs. But we need mm -hmm. to be advocating as well mm -hmm. as we can for the county commissioners to help us with that when they can because they're pulling out more tax revenues out of the town of Clayton than the town of Clayton is pulling out of the town of Clayton. Interesting. And a comment to tag along to that, James, is the better we define this, the more the county can use it yeah. The DOT can use it, the school board can use it, so the more we plan for the future and reflect it in this report, yeah, so, so it will be seen. Right? The, the ideal thing would be for this to kind of be zoomed in or a exhibit or an attachment to the counties, <laughs> you know? so it's right there in the same spot, so you know, instead of just the, the Clinton being a blob, you know, it's like, oh, we don't know what's happening there, yeah. you know, so, they so that, that's, that's a great to point, yeah. is that they really need to do it, and I would, I would argue that any uh, municipality in the county that has that, that needs to be integral to where they are tied together like that. Excellent. I uh, feel like we've reached kind of a natural stop. Does, is there anything else anyone wanted to mention? I'm done. 
Well, I certainly appreciate all the great discussion. Um, we don't have this item on our agenda, but we can take public comments if anyone was wishing to make any this evening. Oh, no. <laughs> Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Michael Granis. I live at uh, 215 Beaufort Loop, Clayton. And I just wanted to <clears throat> uh, make you folks aware, in case you may not be, of some things that the town has been able to uh, work with Campo on as far as obtaining funding. Uh, many of you, if not all of you, are very well aware of the Front Street extension which uh, took Front Street from the uh, post office all the way to 42 East. Uh, that was uh, <clears throat> uh, supported by Campo and we received some Campo funding from that. Uh, the 70 and Robertson Crossing that we now have uh, was uh, uh, partly funded by some Campo uh, money. Sam's Branch Greenway, was also partially funded. Uh, you will also note that uh, we have a tunnel underneath Covered Bridge. Uh, we got funding for that, not 100% on any of these projects, but we about 80% on, on, on almost all of these. Uh, there will be something coming forth on 70 and Shotwell, which is currently in the planning stage. Uh, DOT is also involved with that. And uh, the other thing I wanted to make you aware of is uh, we have been, as a municipality, in, uh, involved in discussions pertaining to commuter rail with both Johnston County, Campo, and Go Triangle for probably close to a year. And uh, we have also uh, provided some funding in order to continue plans for that to go on into the possible future, as has the county. And I'll take any questions if anyone has it. Thank you. I did not realize all of those. I think I'd heard of a couple of them, but that's good to know. And I noticed that in the plan, a continued relationship with Campo was one of the strategies. So it sounds like that's yeah. a good idea. It's, uh, I can say they've been good to Clayton. Uh, I, the, I can provide some unfortunate news. Uh, lab projects have been delayed one year, uh, which means there will be no available uh, funding uh, for 2021 and part of 2022. Wow. But uh, I can tell you, I think the town staff has done a, a fairly good job through the years, uh, through the uh, TCC aspect of Campo. Um, to bring particular projects forward for our community. And then the executive board of which we have a member representative uh, from the town council uh, participate in those votes and also have the opportunity to promote those projects with the rest of the municipalities involved with Campo. So. Thank you. Another comment, if I may, uh, I too have to agree that uh, I think there can be some more beef in this uh, particular report, which I do think overall is very good, but uh, I would like to see something uh, more specific related to, to shopping as well, and quite possibly specific uh, locations. Uh, I can say because of my experience with the town, uh, the economic development department through the years, ever since it was created, has tried fruitlessly to, to get what I'm gonna choose to call some big box type stores. Uh, that is extremely difficult, much more difficult than I personally would have ever imagined. But I can tell you that currently the town has what I think is a, a, a very uh, energetic, knowledgeable gentleman who is, is continuing that endeavor and uh, he's not gonna give up. I've got one yes, question. Sir. I'm not sure if you know this or not, or know the answer to this, but um, with the section of Greenway Trail that was installed as part of, is it Glen Laurel Pines out where the development corner at Glen Laurel on Highway 42, I cannot remember the name of that. Um, 
is, has the town got a project that's funded or proposed to make a connection between where the um, walking trail ends on Front Street and out to East Clayton Community Park or Glen Laurel Road? There is a plan. But it's not funded yet? Uh, that's correct. Okay. And um, I can tell you that uh, there has been discussion uh, with members of the uh, county um, to try to carry that, that particular uh, trail a little bit further. The ideal situation, and I know that Johnson County is looking at this, is to get that trail to go all the way to Smithfield. Yes, sir. And I, I was thrilled whenever I saw the new bridge actually mm -hmm. on the right-hand side. It's got you know, the yes. Greenway Way Trail yes. considered which was wonderful, wonderful. Yes. But I didn't know, because I'd heard rumors that it might have already been funded, but I just didn't know. But that, that's a You're crucial wrong. link. I can't honestly tell you at this time that it's totally funded. I don't, I don't really have the answer to that. But I know that there are some funds available uh, for that, that project. But that's awesome, because when that connection, you could go from all of our major parks, municipal, community, and East Clayton, on a bike, mm -hmm. you know, on a trail system, and that, yeah. that will be amazing. And uh, it's it's really exciting to know that that we can carry that trail all the way up into Municipal Park now to, to uh, West Stallings. Oh, oh, and thank you. I know that y'all just had a groundbreaking ceremony, but if everybody here has not been out to Williamson Preserve yet, it is awesome. So I've ridden uh, mountain bikes on it now, and then my wife and I took our two poodle mixes out there this weekend and we walk about four miles and that, that place is is a, it's a jewel and I'm so glad that the Williamson family and the Conservancy and the town of Clayton and the city of Raleigh and everybody has worked to save that so if y'all haven't been out there it's, it's, it's on Mile Plantation Road right when it meets Smithfield yeah. Road okay. there's an old historic mm -hmm. church there mm -hmm. I mean the parking lot's right beside it and um, you've got nine miles of mountain bike trails. I think it's like four and a half miles down to the river and it actually connects to the um, Mountain of Sea Trail. So, you, you know, when we rode it, we actually started at Covered Bridge Road and went down underneath the bridge, went up and then went into Williamson. Mm -hmm. And, and it, it, is, it, is, it is a jewel. It is really, really, really a huge thing. Well, I'm an example, if I may of a lot of different organizations coming together to collaborate to, to make that become a reality, of which Clayton was certainly one. And uh, I'm very proud to say that. So yeah. it, was, it was a long time in coming, but it's here and it's exciting. And so much land there, so many additional things could be brought up. I mean, it's just beautiful vistas where they probably have like three or four acres of of wildflowers growing, you know what I mean? And it's like these places, it's, it's, it's quality of life stuff that we really need to be promoting and saving. And, and, and it is right on, it, it's, it's Clayton, you know? So it's wonderful. Thank you for that. Thank you for your comments. Any other comments this evening? Okay, thank you for the great discussion. Um, hearing no other comments, I can entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. Motion to adjourn. Motion by board member Powers. Is there a second? Second. Second, and you know what? I have to look at your last name, Spence. <laughs> cheat sheet. Hey, I know you're gonna leave a mask on, I can tell you. <laughs> Uh, second by board member Spence. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion is carried. Meeting adjourned.